Hi, I'm Mike Cutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss milk fat and milk protein or components. Perhaps the key question we have in this module is, do you have an economic opportunity to increase profitability and perhaps health in your dairy herd? Certainly we know in most milk markets here in the United States, except perhaps in Florida and Georgia, the value of milk is based on solids. Let's look back over three years to see what the, how this has changed and will change in the future the same way. You can see in 2003, a very low milk price year at $11.40, the value of a pound of fat, $1.21, a pound of protein, $2.24. Let's go to 2004. Just look at that, folks. Tremendously higher milk prices, probably record high milk prices. And you can see milk fat and milk protein has value. And of course, that is based on both the pounds of milk and the percent of those solids in each of those milk products. That's the reason for this module. A key factor on this slide says what is the normal values for various breeds of cattle. This comes out of Hordes Dairyman each in the August issue and you can take your favorite breed and say well for a brown Swiss the normal butterfat test would be about 3.96, the normal true protein 3.26, that ratio is 82 percent if I divide fat into protein or conversely protein into fat that ratio is 1.21. So this slide says is there an opportunity to improve the component based on your breed or a given component within this relationship. A powerful, powerful slide in terms of trying to answer the question, what's normal? The next step is, gee, my cows are low on milk fat. Where does it come from? There are two major sources of milk fat synthesis in the dairy cow. About 50% comes from rumen via phase, primarily acetate and butyrate, and this is from microbial fermentation. Yes, waste products from the bacteria the cow absorbs and says this is a source of energy. Rumen via phase can support as much as 80% of the energy needs of dairy cows. The other 50% of milk fat, based on Wisconsin research, would come from blood lipids. Those blood lipids could come from dietary sources such as fuzzy cottonseed or roasted soybeans, mobilized body fat, which would be weight loss and early lactation. That's why some of those early lactation cows have butterfat tests over five. And of course, the cow can synthesize some of that in her body, in her liver, and put it out into the bloodstream. Generally, most of my phone calls come, why is the milk fat test so low? There are two general reasons for that. First of all is what I will call an energy shortage. Cows just run out of groceries. Generally, characteristics would be in mid-lactation, meaning right after peak milk, 90 to 150 days when they're really producing high levels of milk. The cows are generally thin, which means they've taken everything off their back they can. The butterfat tests are modestly low, 2.8, 2.9, somewhere in that 2.5 to 3 range. But the good news is, if you want to use good news, the milk protein will even be in that same ratio. So as the butterfat test goes down, the milk protein test follows follows a down, a very key indicator, and generally speaking indicates cows can't eat enough, the ration is not balanced, or there are other bunk management factors going on in the farm. The other type of milk fat depression is called milk fat test depression. This is very serious. This can happen any stage in the lactation, meaning fresh cows, mid-lactation, late-lactation cows. Generally, the cows are in good condition because they are actually taking the extra energy from the milk fat and putting it on their body, steer-like if you wish. These can have very low butterfat tests, below 2.5, below 0.9 actually. Generally speaking, milk protein is higher than milk fat, another key diagnostic tool. These cows can be off feed, they will have laminitis, sore feet, they have rumen acidosis going on. And of course, in some cases, this can be caused by unsaturated fatty acids, such as corn oil or some of our soy oils out there in the feeding program. Be really sure you diagnose, if you have low butterfat tests, which one of these two major factors are occurring on the farm, and then take corrective action. There are a number of factors that can drop butterfat tests such things as starch loading, particle size, rate of forage feeding, the particle size of the hay in the feeding program, moisture of the diet. These can be all contributing factors, but the big two to really watch are listed here. First, the uh, feeding of trans-CLA, conjugated linoleic acids, which can reduce milk fat synthesis in the mammary gland. This means your cow is not sick. In this situation, these fatty acids block milk fat synthesis in the mammary gland. As little as 10 to 12 grams of this synthesized in the rumen can cause the problem. What causes these CLAs to form, the whole list I mentioned earlier, can lead to a rumen environment that favors the formation of this fatty acid.
Also, feeding rumenzin or monenzin, the generic name, can lower butter fat test. And that can be due to such things as feeding too much monenzin. We definitely find that as over 350 milligrams a day. Starch levels over 28% in the diet. A lack of functional fiber, which is 5 pounds over 1 inch in length on a dry matter base. Or a lack of total fiber in the diet, less than 28% NDF. Now let's look at our second milk component, and that is milk protein. This was important because we need to have incentives, and we are getting incentives if you saw our previous slides, that milk protein is more valuable than milk fat, reflecting our cheese production here in the Midwest, and therefore this component should reflect market value or cheese value on the marketplace. Again, generally there are two sources of milk protein if you are missing milk protein on your farm. The first one is microbial protein, and generally about 65% of the total amino acid requirement for a dairy cow will come from microbial protein. So therefore, anything you and I can do to stimulate rumen growth should be a plus. Adequate amounts of fermentable carbohydrate, 33 to 35% NFC, 24 to 76% starch. You could add 4 to 6% sugar. You could add having good rumen pH. All these factors would be a plus under number one. The second factor is dietary protein, and this makes up about 35% of the total amino acid requirement of the cow. So the level of protein, 16.5 to 17.5% crude protein, of which 34 to 36% should be ruined undegradable protein, and then the quality of that protein should have a ratio of three parts lysine to one part methionine on a metabolizable protein base. That dictates having the right kinds of amino acid to make milk protein. One thing to watch as you look at milk protein is when you feed fat. Generally speaking, when you feed fats or oils, you will see lower milk protein for a couple of factors. First, the energy from fat is not a rumen microbial energy resource. The bugs don't grow on it. So therefore, you don't get that microbial amino acid kick from the, from the energy source. Second of all, a pretty good guideline from Dr. Carl Davis is for each pound of added fat, expect a drop of about a tenth of a percentage point of milk protein, primarily because we dilute that out as listed in the third bullet item. We get more milk from the fat, but the protein does not increase that is being synthesized, and we see this fat test, excuse me, this milk protein test go down. Fourthly, if it's the wrong kinds of oils or fats, we can see a negative effect on rumen microbial growth and efficiency, and especially in the fiber digesting bacteria. And finally, certain fatty acids may limit the amino acid uptake by the mammary gland, as suggested by California researchers. This summary table was put together by folks from Pennsylvania looking at the effects of different dietary fat and oil sources in terms of cow response. You see the number of studies listed. Next, the milk response. And you can see quite variable milk response. So some of these fat sources really push milk. For example, extruded soybeans, where others do not. Butter fat increases. You can see that cottonseed generally increases butter fat test, primarily because of the fuzz in there that stimulates rumen fermentation and maintains a good rumen environment. Others can war other directions. Notice on milk protein, in all these studies, on the average, dropping milk protein about a tenth of a point. And then you can see they can also have an impact on dry matter intake. So farmers should not avoid some of these products, but be well aware management and feeding strategies will be important to get the desired response, be it milk yield, dry matter intake, or milk components. This very technical slide looks at how you can change milk components and milk yield based on what's in the bloodstream. Very high tech, but remember, components and milk come from the blood. So if I want to increase, for example, milk yield, increasing blood acetate, increasing blood glucose, increasing amino acids, and increasing long chain fatty acids should increase milk yield. Conversely, if I wanted to increase butter fat test, the real winners here would be butyrate, acetate, and long chain fatty acids. That makes sense. These are milk fat precursors. If you and I want to increase milk protein tests, the winners would be propionate and also amino acids into the feeding program. So let's summarize this module with a few take home messages. Number one, milk components have additional value in most milk markets. Therefore, another way to increase your milk check. Number two, evaluate each of the components and compare it to breed averages and look at differences within groups such as days in milk, parity or lactation number, and milk yield. Finally, milk fat depression will lower milk fat tests and this is a concern not only for cost but also for the health of the cow. Thanks. Have a great day.